2024 is a presidential election year, if you haven't heard. And while that race is, in fact, high profile, it is certainly not the only one that will have a critical impact on the lives of everyday Americans. 34 Senate seats, and maybe even control of the chamber itself, will be decided next fall, along with every seat in the House of Representatives, not to mention voters in 11 states will also be choosing their governors. Today, we are unpacking some of these key races with our series on the ballot. Our focus today is on the Senate race in Delaware. Now, I already know what you're thinking. Why are we talking about a safe, democratic state like Delaware and a safe, democratic Senate seat? You know, voters in Delaware haven't sent a Republican to the Senate in almost 30 years. Well, representation matters, folks. And currently, there is not a single black woman serving in the United States Senate. In 2024, Democrats have a chance to change that. One of their best shots is in Delaware. Democratic Congresswoman Lisa Blunt Rochester has thrown her hat into the ring. She is the first woman and first black woman elected to the House of Representatives from Delaware, and she's already gotten a hearty endorsement from the person she would replace, outgoing Delaware Senator Tom Carper. With an extensive resume and an established career in the House, her campaign appears to be on solid ground. But what are her plans for the people of the first state? Well, joining me now to get those answers is the Congresswoman herself, Lisa Blunt Rochester. Welcome, welcome, welcome to you, ma'am. It's very good to see you. Uh, how would a Senator Lisa Blunt Rochester be different from a Senator Tom Carper? Well, first of all, Simone, it is great to be with you. Always great to be with you. Secondly, I would be remiss if I didn't say happy birthday to my mom. Oh, well, first we got to stop. Happy <laughs> birthday, mom. You got to look right to the camera. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, mom. Happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday. And then secondly, just to first of all say how, um, how honored I was that uh, Senator Carper endorsed me for this role. Um, but we know that this is an election. Uh, not a coronation, and we don't take anything for granted. He has served us well, but I think what I bring is, um, in addition to having served as Secretary of Labor and having a professional career, Urban League CEO, and also being a member of the House since 2016, representing our entire state, I also bring lived experiences, I think, that are unique. Um, you know, you mentioned the fact that there are no black women in the Senate right now. And I was a mom and still am, recently a grandmother of four months. Um, I actually have experienced divorce, experienced being widowed. That was what propelled me to even run in the first place, um, was through a dark time of mine which is why the theme of our campaign is Bright Hope. And so I would bring, I think, that, that Delaware flavor, because we're urban, suburban, rural, and coastal. I would bring the work experience. I would also bring the people of Delaware, our voices, and I would bring my lived experiences. According to a poll from the Delaware Journalism Collaborative uh, that was released this May, 66 percent of Delaware residents uh, say that economic issues are more important to them than social ones. You, you are a former secretary of labor in Delaware. You are the former president and CEO of the Urban League, yes. uh, in the, that local Urban League, all dealing with economic issues. So how would you work with uh, Republicans in the Senate? Because the Republicans in the Senate seem to like to emphasize these social issues and yeah. divisive ones, if I'm going to be honest. You know, I think you really hit on it. When I talk to Delawareans, what they care about is the bread and butter issues. They care about the fact that we're lowering the price of prescription drugs for our seniors. They care about the fact that I've worked on strengthening our supply chains, which I've been able to do in a bipartisan way. We still have more to do in that regard, but that brings down the price of things, and it also helps with national security. I've been able to work with Republicans in the House and will continue to find those areas that we could do together because it is about jobs. It's about job training. It's about our supply chains. All of those things really are the things that I would continue to focus on if, if I were to be elected in the Senate. In that same uh, poll, 64% uh, say Delawareans uh, spend too little uh, attention on education. So mm -hmm. how would you secure more federal education uh, funding yeah. as a senator for Delaware? Yeah, you know, I will tell you, in this last term, we've been able to, along with our senators, to secure funding, particularly for things like mental health. Um, you know, I have a real strong focus on um, young people and making sure that they have the, the tools that they need so that they can be educated. Then also we want to support our educators, our teachers, and make sure that our schools have the resources that they need. So I was able to, in the past, be able to support those efforts and would continue that. But I think the thing about the Senate 
that is so special to me is that it would give me an opportunity to dig deeper into these issues. It would also allow for me to focus on something that to me is paramount, which is our democracy. Everything from voting rights to, um, to reproductive freedom. And I heard that a lot on the campaign trail as well in this last go round, that the reason we didn't have that red tsunami was because Republicans, Democrats, and independents cared about our reproductive freedoms. And so to me, the ability to be in the Senate where we're confirming these justices that's the place to be, and I hope that Delaware will, will, will elect me to, to serve there. You know, uh, if you look at polling about what residents in Delaware, what Delawareans think of you, people think of you quite favorably. Um, the poll found they awarded you an average of 56.9 points out of 100. Um, President Biden is another famous uh, Delaware resident, and he has a score of more than 10 points below that at 46.3 out of 10. How heavily do you want the president to engage your campaign? Well, first of all, we are proud of Joe Biden. Um, I, I have to say, what he has done as a president, that Bidenomics, that's real. Like, people are starting to feel it and see it and get it. And so that's really important. 13.2 million jobs, lowest unemployment in, in a half a century. I mean, these are real things that affect people. For me, I am proud to be one of the co-chairs of the campaign. I was a co-chair the first time and am, again, a co-chair this time. And I think his message that, you know, we got to finish the job. There are still so much work to be done, whether it's on our environment, safer communities, our economy. And he wants to finish the job. So I'm proud of the support. But I also think it's important to note that Delaware isn't safe. No place is a safe blue or, you know, blue state. We are three counties. We're blue, purple, and red. And I work to, to try to gain every single vote because I think it's important to be represented. We have a saying, when Lisa goes to Washington, we all go to Washington. <laughs> well, all right. Well, Congresswoman Lisa Blunt Rochester, you are a barrier breaker, a history maker, and you are on the ballot in 2024. And we'll be watching your campaign. Thank you so much for Thank coming you. in today. Thank you, Simone. Appreciate your time.